Today we're going on the green car for the first time, so I'm excited to see what it's like and how it compares to the standard car because the standard car is amazing enough, I think. So I'm really excited to try the green car. Today we're taking the Shinkansen from Shinagawa in Tokyo to Nagoya. I'm going to show you what it's like in the green car compared to the standard car, what the seats are like, how much space you get, and other things you need to know, and whether it's worth upgrading to the green car. There'll also be some extra tips along the way, including those new rules about luggage on the Shinkansen. I'll show you where to store it and what you need to do. If you want to know about taking the Shinkansen, how to find your platform and all of that, I also have a video about that on my channel. The link's in the description. And there's New Japan videos on Thursdays if you want to subscribe. There are two classes on the Shinkansen, the standard car and the green car, which is like first class. When you buy your JR pass, you can get either a standard pass or a green car pass. If you get the green car pass, you can travel in the green car whenever you want, there's no extra charge. Otherwise, if you're not getting a JR pass, you can buy individual tickets for the green car, just like the standard car. Thank you to JR Central in London for providing our JR passes for this trip. Japan Railway Central is the train company that runs this section of the Shinkansen and all the JR lines in this central area of Japan. Today we're on the newest bullet train on this line, the N700S. S stands for Supreme. It has more comfortable seats, a more streamlined shape, and if there's an earthquake or a power cut, it can power itself to get to the nearest station so you're not left stranded. Another new feature, which thankfully I didn't experience, is that if any of the seats are wet, stripes appear on the fabric that you can see before you sit down, so the cleaning crew can also know immediately which need changing. Currently, not all the bullet trains on this line are the new N700S. If you want to take the newest one, I found a timetable online which tells you when it'll be running. It's updated every day, and that's for journeys on the line between Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka. The link's in the description. It was actually quite exciting looking up the times and trying to reserve the right one, and then seeing the big N700S logo when it arrived at the station. There are signs on the platform that tell you where to wait for each carriage, so you'll always be in exactly the right place to go straight to your seat. It's very organised. Here we are, and we're in the green car! More about this in a minute. I got trapped in the baggage space for a minute while everyone was getting on. In the green car you get a moist towel when you get on. It's called an oshibori in Japanese. It's quite common in restaurants or when you buy food as a sign of good hospitality. It seems like the staff have a list of reservations so they know who to give them to. First, let's compare the seats. In the green car, the seats are very comfortable. Now, I've never found the standard car uncomfortable, even on long trips like the four hour journey from Tokyo all the way up to Hokkaido. But the green car seats are on another level. They're larger, more comfortable, with more space and extra features. Here's a little space on the armrest for your drink. It's quite big. And the buttons here are for a reading light, which is on the back of the seat. Oh, that's adjustable as well. And this is a seat warmer. And you also get a plug socket to charge things. So if you need to use your charger, there's one in your seat. Here's the control for adjusting your seat. They actually recline quite a lot. This could be really comfortable if you're on a long journey. You could even have a sleep. These seats can recline quite a lot. <laughs> and look at this footrest. It falls and it's adjustable with the foot pedal so you can have it at the exact position you want it. Oh I got it, I got it now. You push the pedal to move the footrest up and down and in the standard car you don't get a footrest. There's a pull down tray table on the seat in front if you're doing some work or just eating snacks or an Ekiben, a special train bento box lunch. Unlike local trains it is okay to eat on the Shinkansen and other long distance trains. 
Also, notice how spotlessly clean the table is. I don't know your experience of train travel, but that's not always the case in the UK. There are hooks to hang up your coat or your bag on the seat in front and on the wall. I've just realised there's another tray table in the seat rest. <laughs> I didn't even realise that was there. It folds out. There we are. Somewhere to put your drink. And there's a little tray by the window. These windows it's, are huge. They are. They're bigger than the windows in the normal car, aren't they? Oh, that would be brilliant. Are we on the right side as well? Yes. Is that a blind you can pull down? Yeah. Nice. We want to see Fuji though. Let's put it up. There's blankets up there. I don't know if anyone's allowed to use them or if you have to ask for them. But if you get cold, they have blankets. So I'm not that tall. I'm probably about five foot five, but I can pretty much put my feet out straight and not touch the seat in front. So much leg room. Uh -huh. So please be ready to get off before the train stops. In the standard car, the seats are noticeably thinner and less plush than the green car, but it is still comfortable. They do recline, but not quite as much. You get a fold down table and there are hooks for your coat. There's no light or seat warmer. The whole carriage maybe looks more modern, but it's less plush and there's no carpets. The standard car has less legroom, but it is still a good amount and more than pretty much any other train I've been on. There is enough space to put a suitcase in front of your knees if you need to, unless you are a lot taller, in which case it might be uncomfortable. In the green car, there are four seats in a row, two and two, and in the standard car, there's five, three and two. There's a snack trolley so you can buy drinks and snacks if you want to. We were just saying if only the plane was this comfortable it wouldn't be so difficult to sleep if you could recline and stretch out this much. I always bring a book with me on train journeys but on the Shinkansen I always end up just looking out the window. You don't really need any other entertainment because the landscape is constantly changing. Of course, that's the advantage of long train journeys during the daytime because once it gets dark, you can't see anything. We just left Atami and you can see the sea. Or you could. <laughs> Why do we always go into a tunnel when I start filming out the window? I love how the staff bow when they come into the carriage and when they go out as well. Even though we're going so fast on the bullet train, it's really smooth. It is not bumpy like a normal train. You do feel it swaying a little bit when you're standing up, but it's so smooth and comfortable. And it's pretty quiet as well. It's also really quiet in the carriage because people don't tend to talk loudly on trains, on any trains really. So it's very calm and you could easily have a sleep if you wanted to, but we're enjoying the view. It also feels really private sitting here because the seats are quite tall. It feels like you've got your own space and people aren't looking in on what you're doing. You see the little pedal down there? If you're traveling in a group of four, you can rotate the seats so you can face each other. And that's not just in the green car, that's in the regular car as well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Shinkansen. We'll be stopping at all stations Ooh. before arriving in Nagoya. <laughs> Let's take a look at the shared area between the carriages. This is the same for all classes. As I mentioned, it's very quiet in the carriage where you sit. So this is where you should come if you need to make a phone call or talk loudly. There's also another rubbish bin here. And recycling pans. There's a little sink so you can wash your hands. Very clean, I've got to say. 
On some trains, this luggage rack is allocated to a particular seat in the carriage. Which seat it is varies on each train. It looks like you could lock your luggage in here. This is out of service at the moment. So this is inside the regular car and the area with the bathroom is just the same as in the green car. There's the luggage rack there. And this room, it looks like it used to be a smoking room, but it says it's not used anymore since March 2022. And on some trains they've turned it into an area you can rent to work in. I think that's only on the Nozomi at the moment. It's a good idea. Then you can use your time well on a long journey if you're working. Should we have a look in the bathroom? Yep, exactly the same. No Fuji view for us today. I think it was too cloudy. I have seen it before on this trip though. You do get a pretty good view if it's clear. Where was Fuji? I don't know how I missed them. Maybe I was too busy playing with the seat controls or maybe it was too cloudy. I have seen Fuji from this train before and you get a fantastic view. Make sure you're sitting on the right hand side if you're going away from Tokyo or the left hand side if you're going towards Tokyo. There's a couple of members of staff taking care of everything. I just saw someone come along and reset the seat so the seat was back up and the blinds were up ready for the next passenger. Really good service. I just had a walk through the train and went in the standard car to see how it compares to the green car and it did seem a lot more crowded in the standard car. I walked through a couple of carriages in the green car and there are quite a few empty seats and uh, there are a lot more people sitting in the standard car so you do get more space here right. and I guess that means you're more likely to be able to book seats on a busy train. This is a major benefit of the green car. On every journey on the Shinkansen, the green car was consistently less busy than the standard car. Now this was during the off season at the end of February, start of March, so I can't say what it's like at a busier time of year. But I think if you are going at a busy time like cherry blossom season or golden week, you'd be more likely to be able to travel at the time you want in the green car because the seats are more likely to be available and you'll be more likely to be able to book those seats at the end and use the space for luggage. It also seemed brighter as I went into the standard car. I think the lighting is a bit more subtle and subdued in the green car. The ambiance of the green car is definitely more subtle and relaxed. It feels more plush and luxurious. The standard car has brighter lights and looks more modern with bright blue seats and a grey colour scheme, although the design is different on other Shinkansen lines. Another point to note is when you're travelling in the green car you have to have seat reservations. In the standard car, if you have a JR pass, you can reserve a seat if you want to but you don't have to, you can just jump on the unreserved carriage. But in the green car all seats are reserved. If you have a JR Pass, it's free to make seat reservations. I made a video a few weeks ago about how to make seat reservations at the ticket machine, showing the whole process step by step. Now, on to luggage. In 2020, they introduced new rules about luggage on the Shinkansen. If you have oversized luggage, you have to reserve the seats at the end of the carriage, which have an extra space behind them where you can put your suitcases. However, for most of you, I don't think you need to worry about whether your suitcase is oversized because it's only oversized if the width plus the length plus the height is more than 160 centimeters. This stand was at the station so you can check. These yellow suitcases are the largest you're allowed as checked baggage for most airlines and they're just within the limit. So I think if you checked your luggage in, there's a good chance it won't be oversized. But if you want to make sure, just measure the length, width and height, add them together and if it's 160 centimetres or less, you're fine. However, even if your suitcase isn't oversized, you can still reserve the last seats in the carriage and use this space for suitcases if you want to. It doesn't cost any extra, you just have to make a seat reservation for those seats. It is very convenient. Phil's fully reclined there and there's still space to recline even with the suitcases behind. You can see how much the seat goes back. So if you haven't reserved the seat at the back for the oversized luggage, you're supposed to put your suitcase on the overhead luggage rack there or you can put it by your knees if you want to. If you're going at a busy time, I would recommend making your reservation early because these seats will be in high demand. 
normally I would put them by my knees but in the green car you've got this luxurious footrest so you can't really fit your suitcase there you could maybe put the mini suitcase in the middle but you would need to put a full-size suitcase on the overhead luggage rack but in the standard car you do have room to put your suitcase in front of your knees I'm just going to test how big the overhead luggage rack is so this is the mini suitcase that fits up there easily our yellow suitcases are large and our backs aren't great so neither of us fancied hauling them up onto the overhead luggage rack but according to the official rules that is what you're supposed to do if you haven't reserved the luggage space and if you don't want to put them by your knees. Medium suitcases would definitely be fine but if you have a large suitcase it is quite heavy to haul up above your head. Another alternative is to use a service called Tacubin which sends your luggage to your next hotel for you. That can often be arranged at your hotel's front desk or at a convenience store. I haven't used it myself just to save money because it's free to carry your luggage with you but I've heard a lot of good things. It would save the hassle of going through the station with your luggage especially if you're a family or if it's difficult for you to carry a suitcase. One thing to note though is for most destinations your luggage arrives the next day so you do need to keep some overnight stuff with you. I hope you found that useful. As always I've done my best to show you everything so you can decide if the green car is worth it for you. Before I've always travelled in the standard car and found it very comfortable and better than any other train I've been on. If you're on a budget you'll be more than happy with the standard car. But if you want to treat yourself and upgrade to the green car, it's extremely comfortable, especially for a long trip. And the fact that it's less crowded would be a great benefit at busy times of year. Something to think about is that after the JR Pass price increase in October in 2023, for lots of people it will probably work out better to buy your Shinkansen tickets individually. If you do that, it gives you the flexibility to try out the green car for maybe just one of your trips, or for a longer journey to be more comfortable, or you can treat yourself and travel in style for just one day, even if you don't want to splash out on the green car for every journey. Although, once you've been on it, you might not want to go back to the standard car. Anyway, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!